the reason why we should measure intangible investment is that it is just the most important investment that's taking place in European economies. About 20 years ago, most economies were dominated by large manufacturing, long production lines of making the same kind of product. Now economies are not that anymore. They are people writing software, people doing fantastic design, all of the bridges and the parks that I've been seeing in Valencia are good examples of that. Uh, and what that requires is ideas and information and knowledge, all of which is intangible investment, and that's just turning out to be much more important uh, in terms of spending numbers than a more old-fashioned tangible investment. Intangible investment is very important for growth because from intangible investment comes new ideas, new designs, new information, new ways of doing things. And all of those things are things that consumers want to buy, but they're also going to help economies to grow as those economies discover better ways of booking tickets on airlines, better ways of doing shopping, better ways of getting goods from one place to another. So it's all very important for growth uh, and it's important in understanding whether Europe's growth performance can be good enough to get us out of the financial difficulties that we find ourselves in at the moment. In a recent project that we've done for the European Union, we've tried to measure intangible investment across different European countries. And in all of those countries, a fairly consistent picture emerges, which is uh, the intangible investment uh, is very important for growth. What it does is it gives companies a stock of ideas uh, and information which they can draw on and therefore improve their products and sell better items to consumers. Uh, it's, more investment, it's more important in contributing to growth than, for example, the increase in the quality of the labour force. And in countries like the UK and Sweden, which invest a lot in intangible investment, it's actually even more important than tangible investment. That is to say, it's even, it contributes even more to growth uh, than buildings and plant and machinery and all those kinds of things. The level of intangible spending we have discovered in our European project varies quite a lot between European economies. So in Britain and in France, and in Sweden, uh, intangible investment is very high, about 15% of uh, gross domestic product, and it now exceeds tangible investment. In other countries, like Spain, uh, Greece, Italy, Portugal, investment is lower still than tangible investment, but it is catching up very, very strongly. So that's one thing that we, found, that we find. A second thing we find is we look across different European countries to try to understand why intangible investment varies so much. One important variable which causes intangible investment to be different is the kind of government support and government innovation background that they have in different European economies. So for example, in European economies where governments themselves spend a lot on R&D, then the private sector spends a lot on intangible investment, not only R&D, but also other knowledge building investment like software uh, and design and new business processes. So spending on R&D by governments is an important determinant of whether there's going to be high intangible spending across European economies. Measurement issues are very hard in the knowledge economy. Uh, if we can measure a factory, uh, we have a skilled statistical uh, offices who, are, who have developed lots of questionnaires and they're very good at measuring the values of these things. Measuring the value of ideas is much more difficult. Ideas can travel between economies, multinational enterprises share ideas across borders, so this is much harder. Um, but nonetheless, we have to try to count it as best we can. Uh, and in doing so, there are a large number of challenges, mostly because a lot of these knowledge investments take place within firms. They're not transacted in the marketplace, so we cannot observe a price for them as we can for pieces of paper and pencils, uh, which are much easier to count. So we need to invent new ways of getting firms to recognize the kinds of intangible spending they're doing inside their companies uh, so that we can measure them better. 
Of course, it turns out that many firms, now that they understand that these intangible investments are important, uh, measure them very well within their companies. So, for example, they look at the value of labour uh, that workers have got to uh, spend uh, on all these various investments, and they add all of that up. Uh, they look at the value of machines that workers might use, but those don't tend to be very expensive. So it's by a better integration uh, between the firm's sophisticated measure measures and the statistics bureau's now rather unsophisticated measures, if we can integrate those two things together, uh, then we can measure these things much better. The kind of work we're doing at the moment is developing a lot of different questionnaires that statistics bureaus can use uh, and apply across different firms and different European economies. And I'm hopeful that those kinds of questionnaires uh, will be used in a lot of European economies. Uh, that would get us to a situation where we can better measure these things and it would get us uh, past the Lisbon agenda. The Lisbon agenda, as you know, targets a 3% ratio of R&D to GDP, uh, but since firms we now know are spending much more on intangibles than just R&D, because they're spending on other intangible items, the better questionnaires that we're developing will hopefully contribute, us, uh, hopefully contribute to our being able to measure all of this much better.